This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Now we're going to consider how an individual can develop. And this is normally done through encouraging people to set up a personal development plan. This is an action plan for individuals, which should help them improve their performance. And of course, if you improve your performance, you should enhance your career prospects. It will increase your skills, both skills which you need now and skills which you may need in the future. It will enhance your career development because of the skills, because of your performance. And it will, we hope, allow you to pursue your interests. So <clears throat> maybe you start off in the accounting department, but you get particularly interested in maybe not the ordinary accounting, but maybe uh, in dealing with spreadsheets or dealing with management accounting or dealing with treasury where you're uh, involved with the foreign currency transactions and so on. So you, you will have an eye on this as plotting out really, this is where I want to go. These are the skills I need to get there. Uh, and that is part of your personal development plan. A competency framework can be of some help in this. <coughs> competency frameworks are uh, used both in recruitment and subsequently they can be used in appraisals and they can be used by individuals themselves. It's a way of uh, assessing uh, their ability across a number of different qualities. Typically what you would have uh, is you set out the competences, things that you ought to be good at or to have some ability for. Uh, and you will set out the target performance, what you need to be able to demonstrate really to be satisfactory, and you estimate your uh, actual performance, or indeed your manager may do that for you in the case of an appraisal. So here, for example, we have certain generic competences, general competences, uh, fire safety, first aid and ethics. And then we have a, a couple of very specific competences here, uh, how good you are at using Excel, how good you are at using the accounting package. And, and here's the, the target performance. This obviously indicates that this person has got no role to play in first aid. That's presumably uh, been taught to several other people in the office, so we don't need to learn it uh, at all. We need very high ability in Excel uh, and reasonable ability in the accounting package. So what we put in there is the skill description, the aims and objectives, and the competency levels and maybe how that can be measured. And then uh, we put in evidence of employee competence. It could be self-assessed, it could be your manager, it could be the recruiter, uh, and the date, uh, it's signed off and so on. So maybe we're absolutely uh, fine on all of this. But a manager is just a little bit, a little bit dubious, maybe, uh, at how good we are at Excel. We can't do pivot tables or something, or can draw graphs or something slightly fancier, and they reckon we may be pretty nearly there on the accounting package. And this will give us some insights as to where we need to make up the gap, uh, and maybe will give us some indication of where formal training might be needed. And of course, we could request formal training if we thought there was no other way in which you could plug those gaps. Hopefully, uh, later on, they, they may, if it's urgent, they may set a kind of deadline for you improving your actual performance. Uh, and later on, when they come maybe in three months to review that again, we hope that you've moved towards the target performance. So it's not complicated. It is just uh, setting out uh, specifying the competences, where you are now, where do you need to be, and providing some sort of mechanism for closing those gaps. Time management is also an important element uh, of personal development. People who can't manage their time uh, will habitually miss deadlines, which can be very serious indeed. Uh, they may find themselves having to work late into the night simply because they haven't 
uh, uh, thought about priorities and uh, so on, and suddenly they discover something that has to be in tomorrow morning and haven't even discovered it yet. So time management uh, tends to make uh, people's work slightly chaotic. What people should do, uh, maybe first of all, is to uh, uh, set goals which are smart. In other words, uh, how are we or what do we want to improve by way of our time management? Is it the paperwork? Uh, is it uh, being able to distinguish uh, how urgent the task is? And there is very much a, a difference between importance and urgency. It is important that you submit VAT returns, uh, but maybe the next VAT return isn't due until three months' time, so it's hardly urgent. Uh, what we need to make uh, sure of is that we don't maybe jump too much to the tune of urgent tasks if they're very unimportant. So we need to consider both of these. And the goals which you want to set, uh, they have to be specific. I'm going to crack paperwork rather than this great pile of chaos on my desk. I want to reduce this down to almost a paperless desk. You need some way of measuring it. And you're not going to achieve it maybe in a day, but maybe we can uh, have a uh, uh, a kind of timing so that after a month we have it well reduced after two months it's going to be uh, completely uh, reduced uh, uh, it needs to be uh, something which is achievable it may be impossible to get to this uh, paperless desk it needs to be relevant to us it should be important and we need a time limited uh, we are going to achieve this by a certain time we need to develop uh, skills as to prioritizing results and tasks. Uh, where we need maybe to-do lists uh, to uh, help us with prioritizing this. Sometimes people have got two lists in the to-do list with things that must be done today. And then the second list is things that need to be done, you know, at maybe within a week, within two weeks at some time in the future and, and, and so on. So that they, distinguish basically the urgency of these tasks. And we have to sequence the tasks. Sometimes people have problems with time management uh, because they don't maybe uh, remember to ask people for information and until people submit the information they can't actually produce the report that's been uh, required. It's a bit like cookery. Sometimes you read a recipe, you want to make something for evening meal, and you go to the recipe and it says that you should uh, soak this vegetable for 24 hours. So you haven't really uh, prioritized, you haven't really sequenced the, the, the tasks very well uh, if you're going to eat well that evening. Three uh, kind of uh, definitions to be uh, looking at here. Coaching, mentoring and counselling. Coaching, I think we've mentioned, uh, coaching is where you are looked after by an experienced uh, employee. Maybe you accompany this experienced employee uh, around as maybe they visit customers and clients. You observe uh, what they're doing. This uh, uh, employee will, will tell you how to do the work and will check up on you. It's very much workplace learning. Mentoring is slightly different. Mentoring is more like having a good friend in the organization. So when you join organizations, you're often uncertain as to how to act. Uh, maybe somebody isn't treating you very nicely, or you think isn't treating you very nicely. You wonder, is it just me that my boss doesn't like, or is my boss a bit a bit nasty with everybody? Uh, and, and basically, a mentor is a, a friend, a longer-term employee, who can give you advice. Uh, the mentor shouldn't be your boss, shouldn't be your line manager. The mentor should be someone that you can go to and speak to, uh, really free of any fear that this is going to get back and harm your career. And then we have counsellors. Uh, counsellors give what's called non-directional guidance. Uh, counsellors will not tell you what to do. But if you say, look, I have 
a, a, a problem uh, with a particular customer we don't seem to be getting on uh, what the councillor can say well what do you think should be done about that and you say well maybe what I should do is I should go and see the customer and try and clear the air and the councillor might say okay do that what happens if however the the customer is still uh, going to be a bit recalcitrant if, if you like so what the, the councillor does is try to I suppose almost get to the bottom of the problems uh, and get you to see a range of solutions yourself and then to change to, to choose the best solution uh, that you can see the aim of all of these methods is to try to increase your productivity increase your efficiency and I would also say here uh, increase your well-being in many ways your comfort uh, within the organization